fact, this one's actually coming out in the month it's supposed to! Unlike the last one. Here's a couple of those choice comments. Welcome to the June Q&A! Where I answer questions from last month's Q&A, and then you guys put more questions in the comments for next time! Yahoo! Let's start with a question that probably is already past due. <laughs> Robox and Splatoon Gamer says, It's my birthday month, so I ask you this, Vic, and you must choose it. Ha <laughs> ha! Now my question will definitely be answered. Ha <laughs> ha! Although, unless your birthday's in the last week of June, uh, I think I win. Ba ba! What is the best cake flavor? Ice cream cake. I like ice cream cake. Like, unironically, just a regular old, like, $10 Carvel ice cream cake is top tier. I, I could eat a whole ton of that. Agent 8 asks, what are your cat's favorite idols? I think Tippy's favorite idol is Marie, given all the damage that he's done to my Marie plush. Ha ha ha! Zavadi asks, what do you say is the most useful jab in Metopia? The cat. I thought that I was not gonna like the cat very much, but oh my goodness, is the cat broken. You do the little sharpen claws thing, so you do like double damage, and then you would just throw on one of like the superpower sprinkles. I'm being vague here in case people haven't gotten this part in the game, and then boom, I do like 200 plus damage in a single attack, and I love it. Before that, it was the mage. I also liked blowing everything up with the explosion move, but there's just there's just the magic to the cat class right now that I just, I can't put it down. Microwave Good says, very serious competitive Splatoon gamer question, which ink color tastes the best? The blue. Kinda tastes like a melted Sonic the Hedgehog ice pop. Delicious. Liliana says, hello Vic! Yay for Q&A being out! Here is my question for the June Q&A when it releases in October. Woo! <laughs> can you say blah 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 blog as fast as you can five times in a row? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Blah, 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 Got one. Take one more, one more stab at that before we move on. So, uh, so blah, 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 That's enough of that one. Lex says, what are your thoughts on an eight ball ranked mode in Splatoon 3? I remember it existing in the code for this game, but it just never came out in this game. And I doubt that they'll keep it the same way as they did in the code here, and I also don't remember anything about it, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I wouldn't mind if they like reworked it in some way to maybe make it so you just get ran over by the eight balls or something. I think it'd be funny if they were like super dangerous and you'd have people like shooting at it from each side trying to keep it from like flying into you and your teammates. I think that'd be great and make it a lot more dangerous than just an eight ball is ping ponging around the map. Neon says, question for next month maybe. So those, those new spawn points, eh? It may seem too far fetched, but what if you were able to customize the color of your specific spawn? I would think that you might be able to do that to the ones in the air. In an ideal world, maybe we could even, you know, like, cover them with, with, little, with little stickers or, you know, maybe have a couple of set weapon setups and gear setups that's so we can quick change before matches start. That, that'd be pretty cool, but <laughs> I don't think it would go beyond that because if you could change what your spawn would look like on the ground at least, it would, um... It would, it, would, it would not be good because then people could just target your particular spawn unless they're not visible to everybody else, if that makes sense. Booyah Back asks, Opinion on the creativity of the Splatoon community, whether it be OCs, headcanons, or even just playstyles. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. <laughs> As someone who spends way too much time on Twitter, T, I get to see all of people's different OCs basically all the time, every time that I scroll around, and I will never be able to memorize, like, all or most of them, even, honestly. But it's crazy how people are able to make so many different, unique OCs so easily, like, even while staying within the bounds of being, like, a squid or an octopus, 
people make all kinds of unique hairstyles, storylines that I would have never thought of in a million years. There's so many different ways that people have chosen to have their in like OCs like interact with each other. Even sometimes people make really unique setups for their Agent 3s and Agent 8s and I just, I, I don't know how they do that, how massive their brain is to let them do the thing, but wow. I think that's part of what keeps the Splatoon community so lively as it is, is that people are so invested in this game, in their characters, in seeing where the lore goes in the next game. And, and I am too. I, I, wanna, I wanna see it keep going. I wanna see what OCs people make for the next game, and I'm excited to maybe possibly give Slushy a little bit of lore down the line instead of just leaving her as a mildly blank slate in you guys' mind, but not in mine. Wee! Odoran says, Do you think that the Grizzco weapons might be up for grabs in Splatoon 3? Well, if they want to have some kind of Grizzco weapon expansion at some point as part of a DLC, maybe? Would it be fun? Is if Grizzco and Grizzco's industries are like the main bad guy of Splatoon 3, as some people want to say because we have access to Little Buddy, It'd be fun if at some point Sheldon gets his hands on some of the Grizzco weapons and maybe like makes more stable versions of them that you can then use maybe in the single player campaign. I, I, I would like that. Like maybe you have to end up fighting against like waves of Salmonids in the DLC or in the main storyline, probably in the main storyline. And then like, you know, Sheldon swoops in and is like, wow, look at all these Salmonids. I haven't seen these since I was at Inkopolis Plaza, but I've got the perfect thing for you. And then just like, bam, drops like the blueprints in front of you. That'd be, that'd be sick. Eldrick says, sorry if I'm late with my question. It's okay, I'm like late with my Q&As three quarters of the time. But am I excited for the Diamond and Pearl remakes and Legends Arceus? Yes. Yes. You see, Diamond and Pearl were like the first games that I played that I actually had like a, probably a full-size brain as a child. <laughs> Because when I played Ruby and Sapphire, I was a little bit young. But by the time that Diamond and Pearl came out, I actually knew what I was doing. I still liked Pokemon. I was able to burn way too many hours probably in the underground with my sister and my cousin. And, and the games have like a lot of value to me, personally. I would love to see them do this where, thing where like maybe we have a thing similar to the open worldness of Sword and Shield, but for the underground. I don't know how they'll pull it off, but I feel like if all of your friends' secret bases could all spawn in random locations in an underground-esque area, that would make this game pretty much one of the best games ever. <laughs> I don't know if they'll do it, but I feel like if we're gonna have like faith towards the way that Diamond and Pearl worked, which was with the underground, they gotta at least give it a shot, man. And then Legends of Arceus just looks like a lot of fun. I know people are like, ooh, it looks like Breath of the Wild a little bit, but, I mean, it, it, it does. But hopefully it'll be a good amount different than that because it's a Pokemon game. I think it'll be fun to strategize and move around and collect a little bit of a team and hopefully there'll be good battle mechanics because we just don't really know what Game Freak is up to yet with that one. But they got some time on their hands. And by some time on their hands, I think that means like six months. So, uh, good luck, Game Freak, you got this! Please got this! Maya says, what is the most useless talent that you have? Like many cool kids, I can wiggle my ears. That means that I am cool. Smiley says, a Q&A question for the next one. What is your opinion on the current economic state of Inkopolis as of now? The amount of times that I mispronounced economic trying to do this question is way too many, seeing as I have an economics degree, but I'm just gonna move on from that thought. And probably say that Inkopolis' economy probably doesn't make sense. Everything should be really inflated by now. <laughs> with how many coins a lot of Inklings and Octolings have. I mean, you've seen what happened. Like, nobody has raised their prices at all, and now nobody has stuff left to buy, unless you're like, a new player still working to get money. Like, it's just weird to think about how the economy of the game really doesn't work out once you have too much money. And that's why I feel like Splatoon 3 needs to have some way for you to reliably spend that cash. So you just don't end up sitting there with 9999999 coins like many people do, especially competitive players or just people who have even played way too much Turf War. 
It's so easy to get really close to max money and then just have nothing to do with it besides re-rolling gear. Which you can do with snails anyway until you run out of snails. So, uh, hop to it, Nintendo. Onion Rings asks, do you have an electronic toothbrush? You see, as a braces haver, I can tell you that those are very useful. So, yes. It doesn't have any cool colors, though. It's like white and blue. It's very generic. <laughs> Sammy Deason says, What is your favorite collective moment in the Splatoon community? I think it's around the time when Octo Expansion got announced. Because everyone went really feral. Because no one was expecting the drop, if I remember correctly. Or at least I was not expecting the drop. I was just sitting there, hanging out before a class at college, chilling on a bench watching the news for Nintendo's drops, and bada bing, bada boom, they're like, hey, Octo Expansion exists. And at the time, I had a, like a, a close-knit group of friends who, you know, were also watching it at the same time, so I like messaged them and I was like, oh my, oh my, oh my god, hello? People just went nuts, because everybody had wanted playable Octolings, or at least a lot of people did. I personally didn't, but I, I mean, I still thought it was cool, the idea of extra levels was good, the, the trailer drop was a banger. I think it just also told us as a community that Nintendo really did want to keep this game going. If they were willing to add such like intensive DLC. That it was just a power move on Nintendo's part. And just a great way to bring the game to life again. So yeah, Acto Expansion. Kingfisher asks, how to heck did you balance Splatoon and studying while in college? Uh, I mean... I did and I didn't <laughs> simultaneously. It really depends on when along the ride we're talking about here. I would say that there were definitely periods of time where I had a hard time balancing it just because I was in graduate school at the same time as like the, the beginning of my YouTube channel. And not the beginning, I mean like the part where the YouTube channel got big. Because when I first started my YouTube, I was finishing up undergrad and starting grad school and not really uploading like too much at all. So I was able to just play some Splatoon, get a little better at the game competitively, upload the occasional video, and do like the five classes I was in. And then I was like, but what if I started streaming a month before I started grad school? <laughs> as fun as video games are, you have to prioritize your studies. It's not worth failing out of college when you're paying a lot of money for it for the sake of video game. All I know is that for some reason when I finished college, the dictionaries died. <laughs> and I've realized that reason is because I used to write the scripts in between classes, and now that I work full time, I don't have that time to just sit down and write like a multi page guide script anymore in the middle of the day, which is when I would always write all those big scripts. So that's why the dictionaries went kablamo kabloodle. Ironically, college and all that downtime actually helped me to make certain types of content. Flopside says, if you could master any weapon and be extremely good at it, what would it be? It, it'd be the H3. Because <laughs> I can't aim with it at all. And, like, I, I would love to be an H3 god just for one day. Like, watching other people be really good with it makes me be like, I wish. I wish I could do that. Because to master the H3, you gotta be really good at positioning. You gotta be really good at timing. You gotta be really good at predicting what your opponents are doing. So being good at H3... I feel like would automatically make you decently good at most things in the game, which would be pretty awesome. Squaggy says, now the new YouTube studio ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, has been forced down everybody's throats. Which do you prefer and why? I, 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 missed, I missed the old YouTube studio. It was, it was simple. And I liked simple. And I hate the fact that like, people can't add subtitles to your videos anymore if they want to. Because sometimes people used to leave little cute, fun messages in the subtitles, and I would see them, and I'd be like, "Ah, oh, that's, that's nice. Like, why, why'd they get rid of that? Why did they take away a really nice option to let people add extra languages? It's like, huh? What? Okay, YouTube. You do you. Vimo Cam asks, what does a perfect day in New York City look to you as a native of the Island of Long? Ironically, despite being a native of the Island of Long, I actually prefer to go to Flushing in Queens than I do to New York City most of the time. But if I'm going to the city, I, g I gotta go to Nintendo World. As long as I go to Nintendo World, I, 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 usually, I usually win. <laughs> Whenever I go to New York City, I still feel like a tourist because I really don't go to New York City very often. 
So my friends and I will just kind of go to wherever we feel like, the things that we like, and then we'll leave. We do most of the same things every time. We go to New York City, we go to like Kino Kinia, which is this like bookstore with a lot of like Japanese merchandise. We'll walk around, probably go through a mall, get cheap food, go to like a bakery, and then go back home. We probably spend as much time in the city as we do on the train <laughs> going back home. So you know, that that's basically it, and it's fun. Tomboy says, what do you think Marina's role will be in Splatoon 3? I'm really hoping that she is not brainwashed. I really don't care what she does, as long as Nintendo doesn't do her dirty like that. If, if she's like evil for no reason, I will just be sad. Cause Marina's whole thing is that she was technically speaking on the bad guy side, but then she, you know, like, you know, ollied out of there. That's so she could be a good guy, air quotes, instead. But no, but, but, but now that now the team order lost, what are they gonna do with her? I want her to have a good ending. Like just just let her hang out with Pearl. Let her and Pearl be like refugees in the new place, and let her just have a good time, please. Phoenix says, any ideas for new specials or subs in the next game? I'm still thinking that we could get stuff that usually is in the single player. I've talked about squeegees before during one of these Q and A's. But what if we just had a sponge? Like, you know, we have the splash wall, but admittedly, the splash wall doesn't always do its job anymore because it comes out a little bit slow, and people can just chuck bombs at stuff or just go around it. What if we just took the splash wall out or had, like, a separate option for a sponge instead of a splash wall? Because the sponges, you know, they grow and shrink. I don't think when bombs hit them, they automatically explode, and they're a little bit heftier than a splash wall. Like, maybe they'd have a very short, like, time to exist, or maybe if you, like, shot them enough times, they could just stop existing in completion. Or maybe they just go away after, like, five seconds or something. I don't know, man. But I, I think it'd be fun to have, like, a sponge option. Sango says, question! We all want a Splatoon sequel, but what about a prequel? Ah, uh, I love Splatoon Baby Simulator, where... <laughs> None of the characters can play the game. I guess it would be a completely different kind of game though If your inkling couldn't actually use a weapon. I don't know what they would do with that, but that's just funny to think about Golem says, do you think we'll see any big changes to weapons in Splatoon 3? Like the rollers vertical flick being added in Splatoon 2. The only thing I can think of is people have always questioned why the Brellas in this game can't like protect you from stuff like Inkstorm so maybe if Nintendo wants to add some level of uniqueness to Brella in the next game, let people hold their Brella up optionally. Let's see, you can protect yourself from like fall off from like a Splatling, because obviously Splatling like shreds Brella shield anyway. So why not give the Brella some kind of like small advantage when it's hiding under cover? I think that would give it a lot of strength too. Parisha says you can edit one ranked mode to your will for Splatoon 3. What would it be? And how? And I'm gonna answer this with a joke answer because it was the first thing that came to my mind. But what if we took the tower and tower control and just just made it really, 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 really tall? Like, like unnecessarily tall. Like three times taller than it was. Just, just for jokes. Like maybe it only happens like <laughs> one every 10 games, but you like start the match and you can see the tower already from like your spawn. That would just, that would just be stupid. But I would laugh if that ever happened. Like if it ever glitched and did that, that'd be great. Meow says, I leave you with my question, Vic. Have you ever thought of playing Metopia for your next live stream? <laughs> uh, this question aged like fine wine, seeing how many Metopia live streams we've actually done since this one. And you know what we'll have more of in the future? More Q and A's. Nice transition, right? This Q&A is done, but the next one isn't, unless it's out by the time you're watching this video. If you would like to leave a question for the next Q&A, feel free to in the comments below. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed hearing me ramble for like another 15, 20 minutes, however long this is after I cut it down. See ya late, and I hope you have a good one.